Hello there, this is Casper from Skyhoy. I will um, go through some details about um, topologies for raw panel. And uh, just to get you up to speed, um, raw panel is our protocol for talking um, unintelligently with our panel. So basically you receive um, triggers like button presses and so on, and, and you can uh, uh, return colors for the buttons and display content. This is all documented in the device core Skahoy raw panel. It's also called Unisketch TCP client sometimes because that's how the device core started out originally, um, but it's mostly centered about bringing uh, dumb panels in a sense out to you. This you should all know if you're watching this video. I want to explain more about uh, topology. So if you look in the manual I'm in right now, you would, um, let me see, topology, there you go. You can see there's a command you can send that will uh, return the topology of the panel to you. And then um, you find further down here that in return, as a reply, you get SVG and JSON. And um, the SVG is the background, the JSON is um, describing every hardware component. So um, what I've prepared recently is a library of JSON SVG pairs for every one of the Skyhoy controllers which are found in modern day installations. So this is the whole list and uh, it may be expanded. It comes from a download link which is found in the manual and in our support section where you download this file, Skahoy Controllers Topologies. In that zip file you find all these lovely files including a little Python script that will um, render something based on these. Uh, I'll come back to that in a moment but if we look at uh, the SVGs then uh, I'm now gonna make a little preview like we have here on Mac so you can see the Airfly base SVG. This is what you would re receive uh, in this command if you're asking for the topology. You would basically receive exactly this and you can see now I'm, I'm just going down my list over here. We have the Airfly Pro. This is the Colorfly, the Colorfly base. Dream Key Uno, so all these backgrounds behind the panels, okay? And the idea is that this background can be brought into your application, whatever it is that want to con connect to a Skyway panel. You can use this graphic as a graphical representation of our controller, and then if you combine it with this stuff inside the JSON files, then you can render a full controller with this. So let's look at the JSON files. And for that, I would like to use a text editor. So uh, we can now again, you see it's the same files here. I picked the JSON file. And then you see the JSON file consists of a section called HWC. So hardware component, okay? Um, it's a little, sometimes I spell it uppercase, lowercase, camel case, all kinds of cases, type index. That's the other key on the main level. So those are the two things you find inside. And on the uh, HVC, then you have just a number of elements for as many elements you have. So for instance, this one describes a button with the uh, default label preview one. It has type 132. It is located in X, Y coordinate, uh, as you see here, and it has the hardware component ID number one. So you'll expect that uh, commands coming from, uh, um, let me just give you an example here. Let's say that, uh, you inbound TCP commands uh, from external system to Skahoy panel. Uh, well, okay, so that the, the, the number one is the XX here, if you wanted to set the color of a button, for instance, or if uh, we take the outbound commands here, then the XX is the uh, ID value for the trigger, if the button was pressed up or down and so forth. Now, uh, the type 32, you see at some point we'll find other types here. Let me see if we can, there's 31 here, for instance. And they are all referring to um, the section down here where you have, uh, this is what they are referring to. So uh, 132, this one. So you can see, oh, it's a button. It's the same type of button every time you have 32. It's a width height is this one, 15 millimeters wide, 13 millimeters high. It can output RGB colors uh, with the RGB light, uh, LED, uh, RGB LED inside. It is an, a button type input, B4, and it has this description. It's an elastomer four-way button. So that's, that's how it works, okay? And uh, these things are nicely documented inside here. So if you go to the bottom of this document, uh, or in the 
end of the document. There's a topology section. It describes what you're seeing here. Basically, it describes how can you render a graphic like this for the controller. And um, it explains the SVG background that would look like this for the um, Airfly. In fact, it does. You can just view it right here. That is the code that I was showing in the in the manual here. And um, it would look like this, which is true, we know. And then the JSON topology data is documented here. So there I go through what is the ID, what is the X and Y, the text, the default label, the type, and something called type override, which we don't see in here. If you go on further, then I am describing now what is the type index, and I'm taking some examples explaining what it is, and um, explaining how for the input type, there can be different values. Uh, we saw the value B4. Uh, for the button that we just had, and uh, let me see, right here, um, B4, so you can see that was a four-way button, it could also be a TPI trigger, an encoder, pulse giver, uh, an absolute component, or an intensity component like a joystick, and so forth, and then other aspects are um, described here. Now, um, the little Python script I put in here is a reference to how you can uh, render the final uh, SVG. Actually, I think what I'm going to do now is I'm, I'm going to run this script. You see, I have it ready here in my terminal. So if I press enter now, it is going to generate um, composite files. There you go. So a lot of SVG files are now uh, generated. And if I go to my finder here, you can see that before I had those two, the underscore base files for JSON as SVG background. And uh, you can see the background here, but now I do have the Airfly file. And this one has apparently for every one of these hardware components, a uh, rendered element for that one, including the label, a little number that indicates the ID and, um, and so forth. And this is what I hope that you will do in your applications as well. Basically, um, the idea why I want it to be freely, um, or it's something that you need to render is because it is likely you would like to uh, render it uh, differently, or you want to have uh, to add stuff like uh, clickability on these. So when you click it, a little uh, menu will pop up where you can assign functions to this button in your application and so forth. And this is why we separate these things. But if you want to align yourself with how Skahoy generally presents this on our websites, then this is why I have given you the uh, Python script along with the manual here as a um, reference for how we generate these things. Um, just to, to let you know, if we go to staging or, Scar or course scarhoy.com and you look at such as the Airfly, uh, let's uh, open that, go to the advanced tab, then this is exactly what you see for uh, an Airfly uh, like this one. Okay, so one of the things you see here is that <clears throat> on Skyhoy controls in general, there's something called sections, and um, a section is indicated by this little label and then a box uh, dash dashed lines box around a number of components. And um, in other words, clicking the section um, uh, here allows you to assign actions like um, which color you want for this particular section of the controller and so forth. This is a controller specific component. Um, I, I don't want to force it on you having external applications because for you it wouldn't be necessarily so that you want to group these six buttons. So I think the sections are not necessarily relevant for external applications, which is why for uh, what you see me do uh, here, you see that this graphic is actually rendered without the sections. So, um, because I, I propose that this is what you likely want to do, but you can see the background graphic actually has the sections indicated on it. And, um, you will have to filter it out. It's done by simply changing the visibility of the background. And then the little uh, section element here is not rendered, but it is a part of the JSON data. So if you go into uh, the JSON data here, then uh, you'll find somewhere in this long list, you can actually see there's a number of these elements called controller and section, which has the type 250. And they are um, the, the representatives of sections on controllers. 
Let's go to the Python script. It has uh, a number of parameters you can set. For instance, render sections. So if I, for instance, change this to true, and then I uh, run the script again here, then you'll see that now it actually rendered the sections on my SVG. So you can have that, or you can disable it. Uh, another thing I did was to add a little um, parameter here that would allow us to have uh, the type numbers of each component rendered. So uh, now you can see for, for each component, it says uh, type 131, 132, 132. So <clears throat> if, if you're curious, um, what are the different components, which type are they, and you want to have it in this kind of overview, then I, I just made it so that it is actually rendered for you. Uh, so that is um, that can be neat as well, if you want to investigate this. And, um, uh, well, actually, in particular, I want to mention that for the controller called Ref2 uh, 2020, which is a, a non-existing controller. It is uh, this one, component reference. So what I did was to take all components which are currently uh, being used on controllers from us, and uh, I just threw them in on a background here. So obviously this doesn't exist, but it gives you a chance to um, to basically have an overview. So there's a knob which has type 18. It looks like this, has this kind of display. There's another knob with another type of display, a knob with this type of display and so forth. So that's, that's pretty nice. Um, and hey, talking about displays, um, now we come to some of the meta information that uh, is involved. Uh, well, no, wait, just, just a second before that. Um, no, actually, I will show you that. So we go back to the script and uh, I will put in true here, okay? Um, and then I wanna go back here and render them again. And then let's see. So now this time the graphic has been updated with, uh, okay, sorry. Yeah, you see, the uh, dimensions, the pixel dimensions of the displays. These are all graphical displays. Um, there's no exception to that rule. So we can put 112 times 32 pixel bitmap graphics on this display. Um, uh, you can also render text, but it's still a graphical display. So uh, there's actually information involved. Oh, you see these two actually represent color displays, which is nice. So what it tells you is if you wanted to send graphic over to this knob, you know the exact pixel dimension to exploit the full area of the display. Over here, you know the full pixel dimension to exploit the area of the display as well. And you can see it's a color display, which is nice to know, right? Down here, you see uh, the pixel dimensions of these as well. Okay. So that's some of the things that comes out of this little Python script. Again, the script is for reference. And in fact, if you read the comments, I, I think the comments pretty nicely describe what is happening inside here. So um, you can um, you can learn a lot from it, okay? And um, it, it goes along with the documentation in the PDF file here, all right? Now, um, if we go back to... Um, sorry, the SVG here, then let me comment a little bit on these components. Okay, um, and well, no, wait, maybe, let's go to the SVG. So why don't we look at the uh, JSON for the ref 2020, like this one. So you can see in terms of hardware components, um, I put onto this uh, fake controller. We, it also has IDs and it has X, Y coordinates and uh, it has a title. Um, this title, by the way, according to the manual, you're welcome to let your users change it. It's just a label to you know whatever application specific you want. And then you can see the different types are referred here, as you already know. Let us just scroll a little bit because this, this just goes on and on and on, uh, except let me see if we have any no, we don't have any exceptions. Now, let's go to the type index. So the thing is the type index is gonna be really long for this controller since every single type is represented. So type number two, very simple. It has a width and a height. It has uh, output RGB, so it, it can be an RGB uh, LED output. And in the input is B, that means button. Description, sculptured, hard cap, button. Okay, let's see if we can find it on the SVG. So, um, 
it's uh, it's over here. It's this NKK type button. Um, and next to type number three, I can see it's type number three. I'm, I'm afraid you may not be able to. Maybe you can now. But for whatever reason, when I release it here, ah, okay, at least these numbers disappear. So, But you can see type number three. Um, is a larger button. As you can see, it is 17.4 millimeters. So this is tenth of a millimeter. Um, and it's 17.4. Uh, also RGB and so forth. Now, um, let's find something more complex. Let's find a fader like this one down here. It has type number 21. So how is this fader rendered? Um, 21. Let's scroll to that one. So it has a, has a small width and a high height. The type is analog vertical. By the way, again, these types, keep in mind that they are all documented right here, okay? So far we have seen analog vertical, it's right here like faders, uh, B is standard buttons, B4 is four-way buttons, and so on. Um, now this, uh, yeah, let's, and then there's a description. Now, notice this one. This element, sub, indicates a number of additional elements that should be rendered. These are um, mostly visual elements. And uh, if we scroll a little bit, you'll see that at some point, we often find a little sub-element here. And especially these are used to render the display areas, the dark areas for displays. But if you go down to, for instance, the LED bus, the three-step LED bus, we have more than one sub-element, which uh, now um, the type, which is indicated with underscore, is C, circle, and uh, the radius is 10, and the X and Y coordinates relative to the... Um, center of the component, um, which was given uh, up in the HWC part of this structure, is uh, these uh, co uh, offset uh, coordinates. Um, and let's go back to the graphic, because you see the fader has, oh sorry, go back to 21. There we go. Okay, so in this case, it is not a circle. It, the underscore is R, so that means rectangle. This is the X and Y coordinates, and the width and the height is 12500. That is the definition for rendering this little box. And you see the same for 23, which turns out to be slider 45 millimeter, the one just next to the same, that's this little box. So quite often you'll find that the hardware components here the main component, which is the rectangle in the background here, or the circle in case of a knob, is uh, typically the, the one that you click on. And these are just um, decorational elements on top of it. Um, same happens, let me see, this is also decorational, this little guy. And especially the LED bars are full of decorational elements. All these small uh, indicators of the actual LED inside. Are decorational the same with the three round uh, indicators right there which came from the type 141 which we just briefly looked at and then all these up here for the displays these dark areas are also indicators of a display window and um, now I need you to, to take a look at the sub index ID I, I put this in because I imagine that if, if you wanted to uh, for an analog component like this one to have like a handle you can grip to, then this index would point to index zero, which is the first element and the sub element, basically telling your application that you are free to choose index zero in this area as, as a handle, something that you can uh, drag. You could use this handle, uh, uh, drag, drag it along, uh, up and down uh, to, if you wanted to simulate fader values, right? Um, so that's the idea of that one. Okay, so, um, yeah, um, let's, I think we, we want to look a little bit more at what is in this type index. So uh, if we can spot anything unusual, because now you could basically go through this and then you can see how is it rendered over here. And um, I want to see if we can spot some other things. Uh, first thing that comes to mind is number 12, where we immediately see that it's a button with RGB backlight colors. It has these dimensions, but it also has a display. And the display dimensions, pixel dimensions, are 54, uh, 64 by 32. 
and let's see if we can find number 12 uh, on on this one so it is supposed to be a button it is right here okay um we just bring it up once again so this is number 12 and um you can see this is um this little black rectangle is the indicator of the display which is actually rendered by this one so again it says rectangle xy uh, offset coordinates width and height it has rounded corners five and it has this style now since it's rendered as an svg element the convention is that anything which is not prefixed with an underscore will or should be rendered as a um, attribute to that element um okay and then uh, this information up here tells us that there's this display pixel dimensions and the sub IDX indicates that the display is actually not the main element. The main element would be this area. The main element is not the display. The display is the first index in the sub element down here, which is this one. This is why in my little script, you can see that it should say 64 by 32 here, but the rendering is is not good for some kind of unknown reason but uh, you see when i release it after zooming then it disappears so i'm sorry about that my my mac messing this up you see there's a number of components which are actually displays in and of themselves and in those cases it is the main element which is a display that has the pixel dimension associated with them we could go to type number 32 for instance to see this so scrolling a little bit in this list there you go, width and height, yes. Uh, it is display with these pixel dimensions and it has this description. Let's see what else we can find in the type index that would be worth commenting on. So, um, 14 is a, uh, a pulse giver with button press, so an encoder. It also has a display apparently. Um, these have sort of been covered. That was the GPI input. So the idea is actually you could try to render this uh, this controller, the uh, reference controller here. You, you could take this base JSON and SVG, and if you can render this in your application, you you will be pretty safe to assume that you uh, would render perfectly any Skyhoy controller which connects because this is like 99% of the components that we put onto a Skyhoy controller that you are likely to encounter. So um, that's a pretty nice test case for your application. Oh, there's a little interesting one here. Um, there's a modification. It is also described in the document. Um, up here that you should actually pass the input by splitting with commas because there can be additional parameters like for instance a shuttle wheel is not uh, it has seven steps it doesn't have um, completely linear from zero to 500 when you turn it uh, left and right uh, so that's that's a little thing to be aware of um, maybe if we get a little further down to the led bars we should see something more interesting. So this one was a three-step LED bar. On the Skyhoy controller, it is um, down in this corner. You see it on a lot of controllers, actually. It has, you know, uh, three small um, round circles here indicating one, two, three LEDs. And um, for these sub-elements, um, first of all, I indicate that there's an extended return value called ext steps, and it tells us that um, this element, when it receives an extended return value, which is um, not just uh, you know on and off or dimmed, then you can render it onto this um, stepwise element, and it is telling us that inside the substructure you can look for the underscore idx to indicate what is component number one, two, and three in terms of how you want to light them up if you want to simulate um, lighting up an LED bar. And the same is true for this one. That actually reminds me that this extended return value is used in another case, apart from all the LED bars, it's also used up here for component number 28, which is a motorized fader. And in this case, the value is position. And that is because a motorized fader can take position based on the um, uh, value 
And um, the motorized fader is um, actually that guy. So you could even imagine that your little application would move this handle up and down depending on the value of the motorized fader because you know that it takes position. You also know that this would be the handle and you could then uh, assume that moving this element up and down within the range of the component here would nicely simulate a motorized fader. Uh, so let me see if there are more things to mention about this. I think we may be... Um, well, basically have, having been through most of it, and um, then if we go back to the Python script, uh, again, it's a reference, but at the same time, I decided to make it a reference that shows a little bit extra by these features, rendering type numbers and display sizes which I'll just make, uh, set them false again here. Um, then basically what it does is it's, it's taking all files in the directory where it's executed. You should be in the same directory as the files here. Then it is uh, taking all JSON files, opening the similar uh, base SVG file. You see, if, if I'm rendering sections, I'm searching inside the um, SVG for this section, you know, where we have uh, dot sections, the class here, and I insert visibility hidden. I do that to remove those sections that you're likely not to want. Uh, so I put that in manually in, you know, cowboy method there. Um, then I go through all the hardware components, and unless uh, I, I ignore type 250, as you can see, then I make uh, a copy of this. Oh yeah, the type override, I need to tell you about that. But let's just move on here. So you can see if, if I have an H in high type definition, we create a rectangle, otherwise it's a circle um, with these uh, attributes. Then this is generic attributes. You can see I always render mine with a light background color and a thin black border. So you're welcome to do the same or do something else, up to you. So then I go into the sub element of the type definition, and then if it's a rectangle, I render rectangle, otherwise a circle. If it has um, anything else than an underscore in front of it, I just set it as an attribute, as I said. So rounded corners with R, X, and R, Y. These are the standard uh, painting once again. Then I render text onto it. You see I split by a vertical pipe for the text labels. And then I get into the section where I'm basically adding that extra meta information, like um, which, you know, the um, X and Y. And of course, that kind of meta information is for, for you to use in your application. Uh, I would say that if you go into the manual, you've got the, the in type here. The input type is really not used in my rendering. This is something that you would use in your application to understand whether this components being a standard button or a four-way button or GPI trigger and so on. What can you do with it in terms of the uh, inputs you can expect? Then uh, on the output side, this tells you what can I do with it in terms of the output. Should Can it light up in red, green, blue, or is it only red and green, or is it a, some monocolor, which we don't know. It could be red or green or blue. Uh, is it a, an output, which is a relay, binary relay? And this is your indication of what is the display pixel dimensions. If you want to render display content in on your you know, view of the Skyway controller, extended return value, whether you want to, you know, uh, for motorized fader to simulate position moving or steps for an LED bar. Uh, the description of the component can be helpful. And then, of course, this one that indicates all those extra elements that you should probably render to have the same rendering as, as we do in, in our code. Yes. Um, yeah, and that's basically what the rest of this one does. Uh, there's one thing which I need to point out to you so that you don't miss it is that um, for the ID of the hardware components, keep in mind that we have this uh, command called map CCXX and um, the ID is the uh, CC value. Uh, it's because sometimes you can experience that in uh, raw panel mode, you receive a map command where CC and XX is, is not the same. Normally, they are the same. But what it basically means is when, when you receive the, the SVG and the JSON over, then you actually receive the full layout of the controller. But the map uh, values sent over will tell you which of these elements are actually available to your script. 
and it's not necessarily all of them most most often it is but it could be that this knob was disabled so that it is not available over raw panel and if it's not available then you could argue that this should be dimmed out or it should be removed completely from the graphic as if it doesn't exist so your application let users know that there's no triggers uh, coming from this uh, and nothing to send back to it so uh, that's one thing that you should keep in mind uh, we still need to look at this um, type override that I mentioned, okay? So I want to give you an example of a controller here. If, if Now, if we flip through this list of things, you can see, um, okay, I, yeah, okay. So um, you, you can see how nicely I have rendered all these uh, coming out of... Um, uh, oh yeah, but on the Colorfly, by the way, you can see these are options. So if you wonder, these are not always available on all Skyhawk controllers. Uh, they are only available if you have the GPI option on a Colorfly. And that's another reason, again, to pay attention to the map command, because the map command would not list these components to you if it comes from a controller without the GPI option. So in that case, you probably shouldn't render them. Uh, but they are like included here um, for all of them yes okay so you could go through all these let's go to the rcp because i have something interesting to show you on this one now on the rcp knob a b c d up to h is linked hard linked to display tiles in this display up here so we don't have um, this is actually just a standard component i think knob a if we go into the json of the uh, uh, RCP, we can see the, right here, you can probably find, uh, yes, uh, knob A right here, which is uh, ID 9 and this location, type 15. So type override basically is the reason why for this display in the view we had here, this knob has this field associated with it. This knob has this field associated with it. And that is and that's normally coming out of the types, right? If you go to type 15, then information like display and the sub IDX and this subsection is something that is found down here normally. Like sub index and this one, and you know, if you have this display thing going uh yeah like that uh you know the display and so on it's found down there so if you use type override then uh basically we are going through this one and for every time we find a key here like this and sub we are basically overriding that for type 15 so it will be exactly like if this and sub was added to type number 15 that i now added on this component level it's, so it's a little bit complex. You can see 15 is just a simple encoder with binary push, RGB color background, this width. But adding the display information is what renders this tile a little bit offset from the knob. So it's a way to customize individual components. In other words, we have type 15 for all these knobs, but they have customized overriding information about that display tile. So that's one way I have extended the system so that components allow you to uh, go beyond um, you know, the standard type. Instead of having to actually create eight types for these eight knobs, then I can basically overwrite them on component level. And that's what uh, type overwrite does. Okay, that's all I wanted to share with you here. So um, it's it's uh, all available, uh, download links in the manual, um, available for download. You can uh, explore. The ambition for you should be to be able to render an SVG graphic like this one based on the uh, two input files here. If you can do that, if you're successful in rendering this view, then you have done it just as good as I. And um, you should be ready to make a very powerful raw panel-based um, application that allows any Skyhoy controller to connect to your application, draw itself, allow itself to be configured and um, 
um, and that creates an enormous flexibility in, in your application.